Okay, we do record today's webinar, so we are ready to go on. This professional layouts. It is fairly common for both Emily and myself and our support team to get the question, you know, I'm trying to lay this out side by side and get this to look good or, you know, have my rotor stand out more. What can I do to, to enhance the look of my site? beyond the default stuff that one each gave us in the beginning. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to um, go through and show you a bunch of pages. Emily and I will give you our comments on things that we see our customers do that we think are really cool. And um, I'll throw out some ideas to you guys uh, so that you're able to hopefully gain some thoughts along the way. I'm Allison James, VP of Customer Relations here. I am joined by my buddy Emily. Emily, say hello. Hi, everybody. And what do you do? Something? I uh, I kind of do it all. I am a Jill of all trades. Uh, I am a project manager. I'm also a customer liaison. I'm a Alpha Main trainer. So at some point in time, you will probably have to interact with me. Um, and I hope that you look forward to it. <laughs> and we won't forget, she's also a master composter. So if anyone's interested, have a conversation with her afterwards. It's quite fascinating. Um, <laughs> I've never thrown that out for you, Emily. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So here's our agenda today. We're going to go through some samples. Um, what our customers have done, as I mentioned, some images on the page. We'll talk about that rotor, the sizing, how to get the right sizing, how to do that stuff, talk about our image gallery tools that are out there, and give you some tips as well. So let's just jump over to the websites and then we'll come back for our closing tips. Most of the time on this particular webinar, we're really going to be focused on um, sites and site samples and showing you some stuff. If I can get my screen to switch. And there we go. All right. Cool. Um, this was actually the last one I pulled up. I, I'll go ahead and leave this one up and start here. Um, if you have any events, <clears throat> cool events that are going on, um, Visually laying out a page for an event could be kind of a neat thing. So, of course, you can have a, a custom URL that you come up with yourself. But one thing, this is our theme too. And if you haven't seen this theme, it, it's a pretty neat theme in the sense that it has a image block on the top of every page already built in. But even if you don't have a built-in image block, we're going to go through some samples today and show you how you could actually add um, a full expanded image at the top of your page. That is something that's very visual and really grabs people as far as layout goes. Um, another thing that they've done here with this page that I think is interesting and worth mentioning is they've made some buttons. They're using some photo tool. So instead of just a line that says, you know, golfers register, click here, or the little click here lines, um, making something graphic uh, that people will see that they're able to go to. Oh, and you'll also notice We've, this has come from our classes. I know that they're doing this. Um, you, if you notice the words popping up over the image, uh, which is called an advisory title, we will actually do this in a moment when we go create something on a page. This is a best practice, folks. When you scroll over any image that's inside the body of your page, ideally you would like to see um, what's called an advisory title show, and that is therefore a number of important reasons, including audio readers can read it, which is an ADA compliance. Someone who's got some visual challenges, it, a systemized reader on their computer will read those words. Um, it also helps your search engine world as well. So anyway, uh, I think this is a neat looking page. And if you do go to their registration page, um, also within our system and page layouts, if you're using any of our CIVI CRM registration pages, having the background image uh, behind the page, oh, they don't on this one, uh, can make a page stand out as well. So, or a solid background or something that makes it visually easy to read. All right, let me go back to where I was starting with my first one. <laughs> that was actually my last one, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, all right, so, a lot of, and I, and I have all different kinds of sites. I know it's not just United Ways on this call. So there are um, several other samples out there. Uh, the most visual piece of real estate on your website is your homepage. How's your homepage look? 
have you changed your homepage up lately? Is it the same images that you got when default when we gave you your site? Please change them. Um, are they interesting images? Do they have any dynamic look to them, any information? Now, it might take having someone help design them and do that stuff to have them stand out differently, uh, which is something to consider. But definitely the rotating image. Something you'll notice here is there are only two rotating images. Why are there only two rotating images? What's your attention span, Emily? Is it longer than three seconds, five seconds? Um, I'd like to think it's like maybe 10 seconds. Um, <laughs> I would probably tell strangers that it's closer to 20, but let's be honest, it's probably like seven to ten seconds on a good day yeah. well you know reports are now saying that most people when they go to the website are like three second glance before they're I either moving on or so that's fast so honestly if you've got the rotors going on in your site um two three at a max don't need to do more than that um ideally you should have each of your rotors redirect to somewhere where they can click them and they go somewhere else um one of the Thing on the site that I did want to point out as far as layouts and things that are interesting is most all of your sites have some kind of footer area. Are you using your footer area? Menus are important on your footer area, um, really important in today's mobile world because uh, the mobile menus actually lay out. But also, it's a great place to put in a few other little, we see Amazon Smile things here, we see Charity Navigator, we see um, Google Translate, we see newsletter sign up boxes. So do think about the bottom portion of your site and don't disregard it as unimportant. It's actually an important space. Um, when I take this site to a mobile view, notice that the main menu across the top is now a hamburger menu. So I have to dig to find stuff, but my super important stuff stays listed in that footer menu. So not every site design has a footer menu. Most of you guys do though. So take a look, if you have a footer menu, you should be making sure that your footer menu is well populated with your most crucial and important stuff. And that's why sometimes when you go to sites, you'll see really huge footer menus with a lot of different links in them, which, you know, it's fine because it's at the bottom, but it does show on mobile. And the reason people are doing that is because of the mobile. So there's some suggestions and ideas there. All right, moving Before on. Before you go on, uh, oh, yeah. tell me, tell me that she has this format, could she change the colors of the three boxes in the middle? You can request a custom programming change and we will give you a price quote. So just keep in mind, guys, um, definitely, you know, if you're looking at your site and you're like, oh, I kind of want to change something up, we can change up your sites. Um, we try and stay to the brand of your organization, but uh, ultimately it's your site, so it's your decision. These are, I always refer to them as picture frames with holes. So you have a template, you have a structured template. If you start making a design changes to the template and we have to have a programmer make those changes, then we give a price quote for them. But that is a possibility. You just kind of want to put that request in. Um, are you on the darker, if you're on the darker version of the site, which is the first rollout that came out, there are some options to like re- um, recolor your site to the newer colors. So get with me afterwards if you want to know more on that. Okay. And then Rachel uh, mentioned that she noticed that there is no like learn more button um, on the rotor images. And is that right. a customization? So that's actually not a customization. And correct me if I'm wrong on that, Emily. That <laughs> is a personal preference. So here's kind of Here's kind of the thing that I've learned along the way when it comes to asking our programmers about stuff. Removing things, fine. That We'll remove stuff. We're not going to charge you to remove stuff. Creating stuff, changing stuff, adding new stuff, that's when programming happens. So if you're looking at this rotating image, and you're right, I had kind of missed that. Let me go to the next page because I think it's the same one. These guys have the, the words coming across the screen with the little icony things down here. If you don't want those, ask them to be removed. Now you have to do a better job of, of keeping up with your words on your page though and doing that stuff. So this, um, is it, was that good? So this, uh, this is the next one I was pulling up and this was one you had pointed out last time, Emily, um, I think. 
<laughs> what was it in particular here that you were you just like the there's a couple the things I really like about their site. Um, number one, again, they're only doing a couple rotors, and those rotors are specific to their community. They nice. Um, you know, they really get across, which is great. Um, and again, the colors kind of work. Um, in well, not I wasn't gonna say that the colors work in there, but I, obviously they do look nice. But additionally, the content in there is somewhat similar to what they have up in their main menu really quickly. Obviously, they have um, this core uh, program, and you can see that listed up there as you go on down. They're really good uh, at kind of getting their biggest uh, action items or their biggest call outs you know, out here on the homepage for somebody. So that way, if you came to their site, you would have no trouble understanding kind of what their focus is um you know within their united way so i really like that about that plus they have some cool features that they're kind of using here too some of them are they do have a little custom element yeah the, the little icons with their menu is a custom element so i like that though that's cool but definitely what um emily is saying here that i think is neat about this too is Sometimes when you go to someone's site or when they go, come to your site, can people immediately tell what your work is, what you do, um, what you're about? They've got this word core <laughs> quite clearly stated throughout this homepage. And um, if I'm like, what do they do? They do this core thing. I'm going to want to know more about that because that's pretty evident. So I, I agree with you on that. I think that's a good, good layout deal. Okay. Let's look at a Unity site. We have 160 Unity Ministry customers. And um, so here's an example. I'm going to bounce to the next one, actually. Here's an example within kind of like what we were just talking about with those United Way layouts where um, our default has a message box that shows uh, in the rotating window. But keep in mind that if you say, hey, I don't want that, remove, remove, free, cool. They don't have that rotating um, the message box on the side. What they do have is really big words. And that is something that if you're going to take that message box away, here's the bonus of the message box. In this case, where you got the message box here, if I go to the mobile view on this page, I, the message box populates below so I can see it. Now the words, if you have words written on a rotor, they become really small. So what Unity of Fairfax has done um, very nicely is the words that are on their router are actually very large so that if you are on a small device, you can read them. So keep that in mind if you are putting words on rotating images um, that you take a look at it on a phone <laughs> and see if you can still read it all right and if it's, it's still visible for you there. So that's an important element on that. Yeah, Amazon Smile. Those are often um, seen on sites. All right. And then on the Unity Winward, well, was there something else with this one, Emily? This was one you had pulled also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, again, is very similar. Um, I love their they, – they change their images often, which is great. Um, and they do a lot of promotion of cool events in their areas. So, again, um, you know, it's it when you go to their site, it's always different. And I know that that sounds like maybe a bad thing, but it's technically a good thing because then it's engaging every single time. I'm like, oh, that's new, and I want to click on something instead of mm -hmm. like, oh, I know what that is. And they do a really great job of using their promo banners as more stationary items that should be up there kind of all the time. Um, and then they kind of use their rotors for. Um, you know, other items that are more of like a weekly or, you know, uh, maybe a more temporary basis as well. So they do a good job of making sure that you, again, you still know what the focus is. It's easy to find information, but, you know, you always have a nice updated, you know, cool rotor out here. Plus, they are in Hawaii, so a low So I always love looking say. at their site because then you always get to see cool pictures of Hawaii. And again, that is um, something that you want to see. You want to see something that's community specific. So that way, mm -hmm. you know, it, it that's what you're looking for. So. Yeah. 
So definitely a point where we're putting here with these first ones that we've shown you is the importance of this rotating area and making sure that you keep it relevant and that you change it up regularly. Let's take a look at some other site designs. So this is um, our theme two, uh, United Way of Douglas County, and this is the entire homepage. So this is actually a good time to mention to you guys, because I know I've got a whole variety of folks on this call with different organizations. Um, it is really about every two to five years that you're gonna find it's time to change your website theme. And I know that sounds like a daunting task. Good news is already as a one each customer, the task isn't so daunting on you. Our team does all the work because we reskin your site while you sleep. So it is not an overwhelming labor task for you guys. A um, little bit of cost, but ultimately it's a task our team does. This is one of the newer designs we have out here. And this has actually been one of the most popular newer designs. And we have found that our world is starting to be tired of the rotor a bit. Not everybody, and that's why we're like going, just do two, no more than three, because people don't hang on that long. A solid background picture has become a, a pretty strong image on websites, um, and so this particular design has a solid background image. They can change out the image every once in a while, have that be different, and they can change out these icons to what they are. So I just think it's an interesting design. Also, you will see um, Stackable menus are becoming a pretty standard thing as well in your professional layouts. So um, as we go through these samples, what I ultimately want you to walk away with is, is knowledge of one, what our, our platform can do, how you can use what you have to do layouts, and potential um, things that you might consider moving forward to do with your site. This uh, is another design that has um, and the upload box on the top, and I already showed Top Golf, so it's a similar thing. But um, visually, our world loves pictures, so think about pictures. Think about elongated, tall, top of site pictures. I really like those. Um, then you don't have to worry about them floating around, or you know, are they on the right, are they on the left, and how are they going to move on mobile? Having mobile responsive sites in today's world means you really have to pay attention to how your picture lays out. And when you can set a picture at 100% width across the top, it will lay out the same on every device. And so that's just kind of a new, a new thing to do. Um, but you gotta figure out how to have those long, narrow pictures. Step back with your camera when you're taking pictures. Um, another long, narrow picture. Now this one, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some, some custom, some of these are custom, some of them aren't. Some custom work that some of our customers have done to allow them to have the styling of layout that they would like. So this is United Way of Greater Lorraine. And we actually have these on the one each site. Um, what did you call them, expanding bars? I call them like ribbons. <laughs> um, they're, they're called uh, expanding boxes. You also have heard accordion uh, boxes uh, as well. That's right. There's a couple of names. They're cool either way, so, we call them cool. Mm -hmm. So this is a custom programming element, but if you have a page and you're like, wanting it to uh, not be this super long page with information that people can pop and open different categories and different info pieces, this is an option. The accordion boxes, expanding boxes, ribbons, whatever. And we do actually have them on the one each side as well. Another example. Now, a lot of our newer site designs have actually this capability on London. Uh, they have the ability to <clears throat> do an, a staff page or a board page where when you scroll over the image some information pops up and you can even have a link to like a bio page. Um, so we've also seen some of our United Ways use these for agency pages, put an agency logo down and have it scroll over. The bonus with this is it's going to look good on mobile because it'll stack well on mobile. Our new designs come with this already. If you're an existing customer and you're like, ooh, I like this layout, because we hear all the time. I'm trying to do my staff page, I'm trying to put pictures and words next to it, and then when I switch to mobile, it jumbles and it doesn't look good, and how do I get this layout? Well, you've got a big open canvas with a regular site page. Um, so we have some style guides that'll allow you to do something like this. This would be custom programming if we're adding it to an existing site. But these layouts are, are pretty cool. Um, okay, now this one, they have launched it, so I can share it this time. I'm really excited about this. 
<clears throat> for all of you who create annual reports, you do annual reports, you do any kind of community reports, community need assessment evaluations, uh, community reporting, whatever. You print books maybe. What if you save that money on printing books and instead created an online annual report? So we have just done this. And it is a ultimately a one page. I'll click one of the lower ones. If I click leadership, it pops me down the page. So I'll scroll through it. So um, it's one page and all of these menu items are anchored down further on the page. So you got their basic information, a message from the president, a video. Um, all of these are like our, our staff and board pages with some scroll over things and some stories and more videos and impact statements and dollar amounts, et cetera. So, and these actually pop down lists, I believe. Um, pretty cool. We like uh, what they did here. And um, this is a custom programming project. And if you were ever to think, hmm, let's go this route instead of printing reports, that is an option. And it's, you know, modern and with the times. Don't you like this, Emily? Isn't this a cool looking thing? I do love those layouts. I think they're really cool. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, another sample. Oh, okay. So just as a reminder, we do do crowdfunding pages, <laughs> laying out of your crowdfunding pages and things that you do. You know, ultimately, when you're trying to have layouts to do uh, any kind of online fundraising or any kind of work, having some pictures that grab people is very helpful. So in this case, they have this event every year. They have 10 dancers from their community. They did a photo shoot with them. With They made a cool graphic, and they set that up. That's something that, um, you know, if you're able to have someone help you with graphics, do. Uh, layouts on our fundraising pages with background pictures and different information. We also are able to create short URLs, so it's, it's easy and handy-dandy. So when Anne-Marie's out in the community, she actually gives out her own URL. She puts it in her social media. It takes people to this page, which has a really nice layout. So again, something to think about doing as you do some of your fundraising work in your community. Okay. Image gallery. Images are huge. If you're going to have a professional layout on your site, you're going to have your site look good. You need good pictures. If you've got great local pictures, fantastic. Um, if you're taking your pictures in your community, and we love pictures from your local community, that's truly, really the best way to go, but sometimes that can be challenging. Step back with your camera. Make sure you give yourself croppable space. Um, get interesting pictures of people and community and different things. But images.oneach.com is where we have created an image library. One Each Technologies has a relationship with iStock Photo. These are all iStock photo images. So if you were to come out here and find an image and say, wow, I really want to use this image, not only on my website, but on my brochures, uh, the idea is here. And you would have to purchase rights from iStock for print materials, but not for website. So for website, you just have to um, sign up with us for the image library package, which is a flat $100 a year. And then you can use as many images as you want from here to put onto your website. And we just launched a Humane Society today. She has this one on her, her homepage. <laughs> uh, yeah, every time okay. I do a training, I'm always like, I swear there's a reason why we have sweet puppies and kitties on the site. So I swear. I know. Because we have Humane Society customers and we got a bunch of pictures for them. But um, we have a whole variety of pictures. So images.oneach.com, check it out. There are really great pictures out here and can really help your, your website. All sorts of from urban to rural to inner city, we got it all. Okay. Um, our support site. So our support site is going to help me transition into right now. I'm going to create some image graphics and we're going to look at some sizing and what to do. But here is what's important with your website. Do you know? What size, if you have a rotor, do you know the dimensions of your rotor? Do you know the dimensions of your promo banners? And if you don't, you can message Emily. She's going to help guide you a bit, but I'm also going to guide you. First thing you need to know is what your site number is. So if you're 
in one of our stock themes, theme one through 10, you would come to the themes. If you're a Unity, go look through the Unity themes or the Meals on Wheels themes or the YMCA themes, et cetera. But our United Ways are all under our theme one through 10, so if you're one of them. So let's just say you're on theme uh, six. No, that isn't theme six, that's page six. But if you're on theme six, You'll scroll through until you find theme six and image library, image sizes. So we are able to know that their promo banner across the top is 2,000 pixels wide by 685 pixels tall, and what the promo banner sizes in little news stories too. This is important to note. You wanna know your exact dimensions on your site so that you can make sure you make the right size graphic. Okay. Nobody's asking? That's a first. So much I know. I'm like, either we've trained them so well, or they're absolutely terrified of me. Right. They're afraid of you. I'm going to delete this. I was what I was doing when we were talking and I got sidetracked. Oh, I got an anchor even. We'll delete that. All right. This is going to be my practice page. I'm going to put a picture and some pictures next to it on it. and want to show you how to do something like that. So um, I'm on my demo site about us. I'm logged in. I would like to put an elongated picture across the top, and you saw me just delete them in three um, image boxes next to each other up at the top of the page. We'll focus on our mission, our vision, our goals. Let's see how we would do this. So I am going to use a photo editing tool. What do you guys use out there? Do we have Photoshop users? I use Photoshop, however, because not everybody has Photoshop or access to it, I'm going to use a free generic tool mm -hmm. called Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R dot com. This is free. They changed their homepage. It threw me the other day. Pixlr dot com. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, oh, I hope it's the same. I've used it for quite a few years now, and it is free. Um, I go to this one, the pink one that says Pixlr yeah. Editor. Yeah. Or you could just save in Photoshop forward slash editor it wants me to run flash okay fine still don't get that whole thing i need to change that setting didn't we talk about that last time so it stops popping all right <clears throat> so once you're in here so i have ads popping up because it's free that's fine i can live with ads i'm basically using a free version of photoshop so ads go ahead and pop up i don't care let me go ahead and open an image from my computer and we will um, create that topic graphic that we want on our site. Uh, did I click the wrong thing? Oh, no, it opened on my other screen. Is this it? Mm. <laughs> and there are other uh, really great free photo editing tools out there. Um, I also use Pixlr. Um, and additionally, I also use a program called Skitch which is another really great free program. So if you don't have Photoshop or something like that, don't worry. Or if you are not super well versed with images, that's okay. <laughs> okay. So let's see, I opened a stack of them here. Which one do I want to use for the top banner? Oh, let's go back to the girls. I'm going to use this for the top banner. Okay. So. As I mentioned before, and this is a standard size picture, so when you open anything in Pixlr, um, down in the bottom corner, you will see uh, image dimensions. You'll have sizes of what it is, 2,300 pixels wide by 1,530 tall, 31 tall. So I can set the images to fit that rotor space. Um, did I do that last time? Should I do that? Yeah, I think you did that last time. What What was this, 2,000 by 600? Uh, 600? I think, so. I think so. So let's go ahead. I'll show you how to take an image like this if you decide you want this to be your rotor and how to size it properly. Let's go ahead and, and use this time to do that real quick and then we'll, we'll lay it out on the page. We'll borrow it for the page too. So this is 2300 pixels wide. I need it to be 2000 pixels wide. So I'm just going to go ahead and go image, image size. This is exactly what I would do if I was in Photoshop. So it's very similar. And I'll set it at a width of 2,000. Now the height is 1331. I need the height to be 600. So I am going to mostly need it off the top. So now I'm going to do canvas size. 
Because if I do image, I, I don't want to stretch it. How do I not stretch an image? That's why I'm saying always have croppable space. Because I actually need to take some space off of this side. I'm going to take it down to 1,000 first, and then I'll probably crop from the bottom. So I've got the lock, aspect lock, the anchor in the middle. And I crop this way. Now I'm going to crop off their heads a little bit. Hopefully this works. And canvas size, we need to go 600. And take up a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. So there you go. So that's the right size rotor space. It is absolutely okay to cut off tops of heads. <laughs> do it all the time. And you see it all the time. That is an okay thing to do. So that frames that out pretty well. This would work nice for a rotor. I'm a, yeah, I could upload it as a rotor on the site. I'm just going to use it um, as the top of my page, though. Top girls. Now, you should do a really better job than that of naming your picture when you save it to your computer. Because remember that when you upload pictures into your website system, they are going to alphabetize based on the name. So maybe this is all going on a certain page or it has a certain topic or it's about education or something. If you were to think of putting it in a file folder, what would the name of the file folder possibly be? You might want to start with that as your first word. Hopefully this is going to, is it going to my desktop? We'll find out, won't we? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, it is. Mine usually it, goes to my downloads, but I set it that way, so. No, mine goes to my desktop. My desktop gets, my desktop gets beat up. It. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so we can take all of these. So, um, you know, if we want to consistently have a bunch of images then on next to each other, three in a row is going to do something like that. We have mission, vision. What do we have? Mission, vision, and our goals. We can add words across here. That is something you could graphically add on a, a site. Um, let's just take these down in size a bit, though. So I'm going to set this one to, oh, let's go 800. Okay. And we can add some words on here. Type on mission. So come up with your plan on how you want to do it. Um, you can honestly set these to be exactly the same on each page or drag the words over so that they fit the same space. Uh, it's going for 100. Now, I know how to maneuver this thing. I use it all the time. but there's different things you can do in setting it up, getting it the way you want. Um, we could drag in the other pictures and lay them out on top of each other so that they fit with the words in the exact same space. I'm not going to be that heavy on detail in the moment, but if you need some training on how to use a tool like this, Pixlr has a lot of trainings out there, um, or, or ask, well, I'll, I'll help guide you a little bit. Um, but ultimately, you want to go try these out. Um, I think I already have one of these because when I did it last time, I did the same thing. All right. Um, let's make him image size. So we're setting him at 800. Is that what I did? Yep. Mm -hmm. Our mission. Our vision. Folded it in there. And our goals. And so um, we're going to set these side by side and show how we could do something like that for our layout. And just like that, you can have some cool layout things. There yeah, is April asking questions. I see you guys chatting out there. She was just asking questions about the image gallery and if uh, she has uh, direct access because she is a current customer, she uh, has access to the image gallery, but she was just wondering if she has to submit a support ticket in order to have those images added to her site or if she could get them directly from that. Um, but you do need the team to help you um, kind of grab the images as they are, as you will notice, they are watermarked on the one each uh, image library. And that's partially because they are all licensed from iStock Photo um, for use on your website. So um, 
you don't have the ability to just kind of go in and, and grab them without them having obviously a giant watermark on them. Right. And the, the thing with that too, just keep in mind, um, cause I stock actually monitors us in our relationship with them. Cause we got a good deal going with them cause we work with all these nonprofits, et cetera. Um, you can't like take one of those images and put it as your Facebook cover page, but if it's a page on your site and you share it into Facebook, you're fine. So, um, you know, there are some licensing regulations on those images. They are meant for your website. Okay, so I'm now on my About Us page. I've created a bunch of images and I'm gonna lay them out on the top of this page and just show you how you might do something kind of fun with your space. So I'm gonna click Edit. I will go ahead and take that very first top image that I made and upload it. And that's the top image, not the caretaker position. <laughs> Cemetery caretaker position. I was helping a customer with that. <laughs> that truly is a customer thing. Um, okay, the width is 100%. How cool is this? So check this out. And I've unlocked the ratio and I must, must, must delete the height. Stretchy, ugly picture on the preview. Don't worry about it. If you set your image to 100%, it will be 100% of the space and it will respond to the screen size. Let's take a look at this. So here we go. There they are. And this width on this particular design ends here because of the tabs on the side so that it doesn't run underneath it. So that's 100%. And when I go to mobile, it's also at its 100% width. Voila. And don't you think that adds just a nice element to a page and a page layout? To it kind help of creates you? a nice header at the top. Um, you mm -hmm. know, and when you see that it can, it can, you can have like a consistency across your pages by having a little bit of an image up there. I mean, it's not a requirement, but it does, does kind of make the pages look a little, a little, gives them a little extra zhuzh, as, as we never say in, in the tech industry. <laughs> yeah, we're not very zhuzhy. Um, but you know, as we title a webinar, professional layouts to us, one of the things that would stand out and make your page look good and that we see our customers do is um, good visual graphics. The other stuff, you know, um, or this going mission is going to be things like being consistent in your fonts and being consistent in your layout of stuff. So we'll, we'll mention that here in a second too. So here's my R mission image. I'm gonna insert it. So now this one's gonna be a little bit more fun. I'm gonna set it at 32%. Because I know I have three of them going side by side. So that's something to think about. So let's set this there. And I got another one to put in next to it. Now it looks big, but don't worry about it. The preview screen, actually, it looks the biggest in the preview screen. And again, yeah, and never worry about that preview screen. And additionally, never assume that what you see in the editing view for your page is, is, is how it's going to lay out on your actual page because the editing view for your page right here is actually from both to, you know, the sides of your actual screen. So that's going to be Lighter. a lot more space in the editing view than you actually have out on a page view. So just be aware if you see something this way, don't be worried. It's helpful for those of us who, um, whose eyes um, are aging like me and you can see in your editor screen better than you can see your other pages. Now, before I go ahead and place this middle one, I'm gonna show you a little trick I'm gonna add on this particular one. It's the one in the middle. So I'm going to put with H space, horizontal space on both sides of the image. I'll just put five pixels of space on both sides so that the images don't smack together. Maybe I want the images to smack together and don't put space, but um, I don't want my images to smack together. <laughs> but I'm only putting the space on the middle one because I only need to. So, and then my last one, we'll go take a look at this. And now there's some, go ahead. I was just going to say that Robin um, just said that we're so visually oriented now that it's a good idea to see a photo first and then the words. And she is so mm -hmm. right. That's it's so true. 
There you go. Let's go look at it. So now, again, with images, there's several things I haven't done to these images yet on the technical best practices side of things. Um, so there you go. There's our vision. Now, I honestly, what I would do when I was in the graphic design program and I didn't mess with all the fine details is I would have added a, a white glow, glow in the letters and so those things you can do with that. Yeah, I dropped. I would have done something to pop those letters a little bit better. Um, I was just doing that fast. I don't want you to sit there and make me, watch me do all this graphic stuff. Uh, but there's tools and tutorials on how to, to make your letters pop so that you can read them. Um, or even put a uh, opacity screen over the word or over the picture. It's like a, like a see-through gray okay. or something. Yeah, filter or whatever. So now there's a couple things I can do with in this layout and structure of this is I can set our mission to link to our mission, which is what I had before. So our system has the ability to do anchors. So if you were to set even not use this top image and just do these three in a row on the very top of your screen to kind of highlight what's on my page. I got our mission, our vision, our goals. Great. So I'm going to click those and it's going to pop me down to the page to that information. Much like we saw with the annual report, you know, you click this and it pops down and it moves you around. So you can use um, anchors. I'll do a quick anchor. And you can also, you're also wanting to do some things within our system that allow you to um, anchor name mission that allow you to be ADA so compliant with this picture. Title? There you go. Yeah, that's what I was going to get to. So now I am going to um, I'll hyperlink the word our mission, much like I'm hyperlinking it to a URL or a picture, but in this case, I'm hyperlinking it to an anchor. <laughs> I was trying to. There it is. Okay. So that will allow it to go to that anchor space. So you can set those up. So the little flag is your anchors that you can put different places, and then you use a hyperlink on the picture to take you there back and forth. Also, while I'm here, let me show you the other image properties that are important for you to know. When you're in image properties, um, we do very much recommend that you go over to the advanced settings and you add an advisory title that'll allow those words to pull across. That is a best practice and a good standard to get into. Okay, there you go. And the fact that we removed the height and um, unlocked the ratio allows your pictures to be responsive in the mobile devices. So. Um, are we, someone just asked if we could show something. The um, mobile version. The mobile version of this? Mm -hmm. And in the mobile version, because Allison has taken out, um, you know, the the height in there and unlocked that ratio, it will for it will try to make these no matter what thirty percent of any screen they're on. Mm -hmm. So by doing the percentages, it leaves them to a percentage thing. Let's go back and do this just a little bit. How's my time doing? Little oops, I don't want to edit that screen a little differently. Okay. Um, Let's just uh, say we didn't do the percentages. I set it at 300 um, image properties, 300 image properties, 300. So this is pixels wide. What does that mean to me? That means that, let's take a look at it. So again, though, this is important though, again, if I'm not using the percentages, I still have the ratio unlocked and the height deleted. That's what allows it to be responsive. The minute there is a number in that height box, you're going to get a stretchy picture on a small screen. Remove height. Have this box be blank. Unlock the ratio. Either use a percentage or a solid width amount. Okay, that's super important for your mobile responsive pictures. Look at, go to every single page of your site on a phone, on the smallest phone you can find and look at every single page and make sure you don't have stretchy pictures. No, no, you don't want stretchy pictures. Okay, so now it fits on the screen. It's actually a fairly size, big size monitor. What if I go to a smaller monitor? What happens now? 
So the difference is, is whether I go 32% and it lines up side by side by side, or I do something like this where on a smaller device it stacks. Now, what if I'm on sort of a medium sized device? I go to an iPad. Well, it's still stacking there. Um, I don't know what the next one is. Here's like a laptop. Oh, I got two and one. So, I mean, this can work. So think about that as you think about it. I personally find that I really like the percentages. But you don't have to do percentages. You could set an amount. Does that make sense? People following what I'm doing? You following what I'm putting down? I hope so. I hope people are picking up what you're putting down. There you go. That's Robin's the right place. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm heading out to our closing tips and stuff, unless you tell me I need to do something else that I'm missing. If I can get my screen to come back. Okay, some pointers for you as we close this out. Um, make your images responsive. We just said this like three times in a row right now. Unlock that ratio, remove the height. You want that height box empty. Either set a percentage or set um, a pixel width for your image. Really, any image that's less than about 300 pixels wide um, probably is not going to stretch on a small phone. But as soon as you get over, well, I'd say over 215, 300, mm -hmm. then yeah, the small phones will stretch it. So it's just easy enough to just delete the hideout to make sure you stay responsive. You just get in the habit of it. And once you're in the habit yeah. of it, you don't even think about it in the future. Okay. And then pixlr.com. It's cool. I like it. Just go to their editor tool. It's free. You can adjust. Adjust the image size typically first. Get it to the width or to the height you want, whichever is larger or smaller, whatever. Whichever gives you croppable space. Also keep in mind with canvas size, and I didn't do this scenario, but sometimes you have maybe a tall picture and you're trying to use it in a rotor. You can add canvas size. So if you can't seem to crop it to make it fit, you can actually add canvas size, which you could add a big white box to the right of it or a big black box to the right of it and type some words on it or add multiple pictures together, tall pictures together, three tall pictures together and make a rotor. So think about um, that with layout. Name your images before uploading them. Do a better job than I did, but think of your first word of the image name as being the name you would have named the file folder because there, you can't line up file folders in our image system you just want to name them well. Don't upload image 28345 or something. And you're going to be like, what is that? Um, OK, so I didn't really talk about this, but uh, when I am making those images smaller and I'm in a tool like Pixlr or whatever, you, there is um, a pixelation uh, guide known as DPI. You guys have probably heard this. 300 DPI is a high resolution picture with lots of little dots in it and it takes a bigger file. On your website, you don't need anything higher than a 72 DPI, which will keep your file size smaller. So not the dimensions of the picture, but the actual size of the file. If your file is starting to get bigger than 500 KB, you can slow your site down. If you ever gone to a website and you're waiting for a picture to load, do, do, do. Remember, we only got three seconds and we're out of there. So you don't want large file sizes. People won't hang around to watch them load. Keep your files small. If you need to reduce them, reduce them to a 72 DPI. If you don't know what that means, ask or watch some videos. Um, use some buffers around your picture. Only put five, six, um, the three images because I want them close, but 10 to 20, pixels of buffer, it's H space or V space, which is the vertical top and bottom. Uh, we'll keep your pictures from running into text. Use those advisory titles, highly recommended. Oh, scheduler on the road, <laughs> random tip out there. Um, as you do start making those rotating images, you know, we told you like, if you still got stock images from when we gave you your site before it's time to change them out, you can schedule 
there is a tool in there to schedule a rotor to come up and to come down, which is great around holiday season. It's down at the bottom, kind of like where you would um, check the box to add it to the menu. You could also have a schedule option. Okay. When taking pictures, if you're going to take your own pictures, which is what we recommend, it is great to have your own local pictures, step back. Take some steps back. Be okay with it looking like you're too far away because it gives you croppable space. And that way you don't have to cut off too much of anyone's heads. Cut off their legs, cut them off at the waist, it's okay. What you're needing is you're needing uh, background. And then you can also take pictures and center people to the right or center people to the left. That way, if you want to type words on it, so start thinking visually as you're taking pictures that you're thinking, I'm gonna, this is going to be a rotor on a site. Ooh, if I move these people off to the left side, I'm going to type in words on the right over the set of trees that's in the background. You know, start thinking along those lines when you're actually taking your home pictures. I like to think that way. Oh, I got more tips. Image gallery. Images.winnich.com, it's $100 a year. If you're interested in utilizing that service, just let us know. Support site, they're always there. Oh, and also, you saw me show, like the background picture on that dancing um, under the stars thing that one of our customers have. They have a cool background picture with the dancing. So those, if you have that kind of city CRM style, and you want a specialized background picture, you can have a different background picture for every city CRM type of event if you'd like. It does not cost additional. You do want to make your graphic, it's 2,000 pixels by 1,000 for city CRM backgrounds. Submit it to support, and within 24 hours, we'll have that background changed up. If you would like us to go through and do some kind of site cleanup and review your site, just um, purchase some site maintenance and we can go through and, and check it out. Um, I know if you haven't been to our 101 class or 201, Emily does a great job with those. Um, we do encourage you to make sure when you're copying and pasting text over to um, use Notepad or TextEdit. If you are finding as you go through your site that you got a lot of different looking fonts and they're different sizes and they're different colors and they look Times New Roman and then Arial and they're bouncing around and you go to the text editor and it looks fine when you can't figure out what's going on. You have bad code. Flat out. Somehow something was copied and pasted over that has some code that is causing you havoc and you can't visually see how to fix it. There are tricks to fixing this. We have customers who, you know, come on board to their organization and they've inherited the site and it's a mess. If that's you, consider um, purchasing some site maintenance and having us go through and do a site cleanup. We've done that quite a few times. And if you don't already have a responsive website or if you've had your responsive website for two or three years and you're like, kind of want a new design. I like those new staff pages and board pages and I like maybe a theme too with the big background and the, the menu that hovers over. If that is you, let us know. We would love to help you upgrade to a new design. That's my last screen. Emily, do we have questions? Not yet. Uh, it's been kind of quiet group today, so. Hmm. Hopefully everybody's just soaking up that delicious uh, professional information and they're feeling energized to go out and make some changes to their website. There you go. So we have um, Emily and my contact information up here. We are your go-to people. If you um, would like to follow up further on any of this or get any ideas, our support team also is amazing. They're always there. So oneeach.com forward slash support. And you can uh, start a conversation. I gotta stop saying submit a ticket. I had someone go, do you mean start a conversation? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> we used to call it, used to say ticket, but now it says conversation. Sounds much nicer. Um, ask them any questions. If you don't know which theme you're in or what your rotor sizes are, your image sizes are, just ask. We will tell you for your particular design, especially if you have something custom. That is going to conclude our webinar unless we got questions popping up and we have a thank question you for your about homepage videos. Homepage videos, all right. 
which theme do you got? Um, so we will jump to that. That is a good question. Am I getting an answer to my question? <laughs> so homepage videos, it depends on your design. Um, uh, for some of the designs out there, there is actually a video player box such as this that pops up a video that plays on your homepage. If that is you, then it's actually a fairly easy thing where you come up and add content and add a video. <laughs> <laughs> you would have some Unity theme three, by the way. Oh, Unity theme three. Okay, well, yours is unique because you have a video header. Um, so we'll have a conversation with you about that because uh, that would be um, submitting it to our team. That's something our team has to change out, and there's actually a cost every time you change your video. So let's let's have a conversation on that. Another thing, though, for other people who have sites who want um, a video on their homepage, if you have what I refer to as an open block such as this, you can um, actually add a video in this space. So we'll we'll see that with sites that um, don't have a video player on their homepage, but they want a video on their homepage. There is a way to do that. You can always embed videos anywhere. You gotta load videos on YouTube or Vimeo first. All right. Okay, that's about it, I think. Any other questions? Nope. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much. We will send out the recording. You have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Take care.